Hello everyone, this is Corey, and in today's core concept video, we will be taking a look at part two of the user input topic uh, with a focus on advanced parameters brought to you by commandlet binding. So let's go ahead and jump right in, and we'll start by asking the obvious question, I think, which is, what in the world is commandlet binding? Um, well, in brief, commandlet binding is an optional attribute with arguments that can be included in your scripts or functions that allows those scripts or functions to become, quote, advanced scripts. And that opens them up to some functionality that's normally reserved for official commandlets that are written in C sharp. Um, scripts and functions can have parameters. Um, that are more like the official uh, commandlets, and these can become uh, advanced parameters with commandlet binding. So in the example on the screen here, in the first line of the actual script, see a little bit about the syntax, how to declare commandlet binding. You start with a uh, square bracket, and then you just say commandlet binding, and you have an opening and closing parentheses where um, this commandlet binding attribute can have uh, some optional arguments put in there. Um, if you didn't want to include any optional arguments, uh, you could leave it blank and then just have a closing uh, square bracket there at the top. Now I want to draw your attention to this because technically the things that we'll be looking at here in our video today um, as it relates to advanced parameters, those will technically still function even if you don't explicitly declare commandlet binding. But what you'll tend to find is that most of the scripts out there that are going to use these more advanced parameter constraints and other things will ultimately explicitly start by declaring commandlet binding, even if they're not going to use any of the optional um, arguments within that attribute. So today though in our script we will, and I'm looking at this one here called positional binding, this is set to true. <clears throat> so let's just start by running this script. So let's say I'm a user, I'm running the script, go ahead and type that out, and then my first parameter here is called computer name and we'll just use localhost today even though if you have an environment with a lot of remote machines you could use that too but if we do localhost we get back some system information so we're getting the computer name the uh, os version uh, total ram so total total memory we got the manufacturer so let's just say though um, we wanted to run this script again and we're the user of the script and we don't really want to officially declare that uh, the name of this parameter let's say we just want to type in uh, local host that's going to go ahead and work but as the creator of the script if you wanted to make a constraint where to run your script, it had to explicitly be named each parameter. You could set this positional binding to false. And then what's going to happen is if I'm, again, the user trying to run it and just typing in the computer name without actually naming that parameter, it's going to give you this error. A positional parameter cannot be found that accepts argument local host. So this is something. Uh, you know, one of many ways that you can actually use some of the arguments of commandlet binding to affect the behavior of the way users interact with your script there. So uh, let's go ahead and make this true again. And we will go ahead and look at some of these other uh, optional uh, advanced parameter features. So we have two parameters in, in this script. We have computer name, which is a string. And then we have the output file path, which is also a string. Now, one thing you'll notice with the first declared parameter is that we're making it mandatory because there's really nothing that our script can do without having at least this piece of information. Um, so that's um, something that if I were here again as the user trying to run that without anything, it's going to prompt uh, to to supply a computer name because of the fact that we've made it a mandatory parameter. So then 
uh, we can just type in localhost and then we get our results there. So the other thing you can do is you can add aliases uh, to your parameters. So let's say again, the user is going to be running this and they, for some reason or another, aren't thinking about computer name. It's not obvious to them. So they, they can type in, in this case, host name, localhost, and then it's still going to work because we have added that as a possible alias. Note two, what's interesting is that it's going to work even if you do not include um, all of it. So if you just put in host, it's going to work as well, uh, just for the simple fact that host is a part of host name. Uh, so that's another interesting thing as well. And then sometimes you might want to add constraints, like let's say, for example, I know that there's no computer name in my environment that's not at least 10 characters in length. Maybe you have very strict naming conventions on your virtual machines or other uh, servers in your environment. Now, host uh, local host has nine characters, but if I were to change this to 10 and invalidate length, by the way, this constraint, the way it works is this first number is the minimum length. And then the second argument is the uh, maximum length. So if I were to change it to 10, try and run this again, just using localhost, it's going to say that that uh, length of 9 is too short and that it has to be equal to 10 or greater than 10. So that's another way you can kind of control user input through some of these constraints that you get through the advanced parameters. That's all a part of the commandlet binding topic. So if I change this again back to nine, localhost is nine. So I can now once again run this. Um, something else to look at here too is this line 13, write verbose. That's an optional switch that you get. Uh, with these advanced parameters. So if you wanted to add the uh, verbose parameter switch, you'll get the ver verbose output to the screen, in this case, querying WMI from localhost. Uh, another thing that we see here is the script is using the, um, it's using the uh, PS custom objects. Now we have a separate video about PS custom objects. So if you haven't watched that um, on the channel, I'd go ahead and direct your attention to that video where we kind of go a lot deeper into some use cases for this um, that we're not going to necessarily get into in this video today. Um, but we create and construct that object and then we have an if-else statement here where if this non-mandatory parameter of output file path is an empty string, then what it's going to go ahead and do is it's just going to output that object to the uh, shell screen. But if there is something supplied by the user of your script, then it's going to take that constructed object and export it to a CSV with a append uh, parameter here. So let's go ahead and use that. We haven't been using it, and we of course don't have to use it because it is not constrained to be mandatory. But if we were to do that, let's just pick this as our path here, our C staging folder. And we'll just call this mycsv.csv. Now we get the output to the screen like before, but now it's uh, gone ahead and created the CSV file. We'll open. And of course, you could make that into a nifty little report here. So we have all that information just in CSV form. And because we're using that append uh, parameter there, if we were to run this again, or even run this against, you know, multiple, you know, thousands, hundreds of other machines, it's going to just append the results without overriding uh, the other times that the script was run and into your output CSV file there. So these are just some of the ways that you can uh, control user input through commandlet binding and some advanced parameter features. Um, there's all kinds of use cases here, so if you want to um, kind of research this a little bit further, if you look at the comments in the video, I'll go ahead and include a couple of things. One will be this link here to some official Microsoft um, training on the topic, and if you're using PowerShell, there's also this. It's kind of long, 
to remember. So again, just, just look in the video description for it. Um, it's help space about underscore functions underscore advanced underscore parameters. But if you run that inside of PowerShell, you're going to go ahead and get uh, a whole host of information within the shell itself about that topic. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, a lot of information. And what we covered today is just a part of, of what you'll find here. So if you want to do some further reading and research on ways to leverage this, um, I'll just include some of that information in the video comments down below. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video today and found it interesting. If so, uh, go ahead and try to interact with the comments below. Uh, a like uh, is never a miss, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.